my hose in Brooklyn yesterday. You see, you see, Occupy started working with uh, a bunch of community, you know, work groups in East New York because East New York has the most foreclosures, five times the foreclosures New York State has. That's the bankers. The bankers have gutted it. They just, they just gutted the place. You know what I mean? Every other house is vacant. Anyway, so what, what Occupy and these community groups did was they picked a family and then they picked a foreclosed home. Now, it wasn't their home, but it was a home that had stood vacant for like three years. And they went in and they occupied it. Yeah, they went in with a crew of carpenters and there were these people that were helping this family clean the house and they, and they, they occupied the home. I mean, there must have been like five, six hundred people there with, with signs and with banners and <laughs> there was a brass band. <laughs> it was incredible. Anyway, we, we stopped at several homes along the way, okay? And people would, they would come out and they would start to tell us their story and they'd say, hey, I'm in foreclosure. And, and you know, I've been in foreclosure for like two years. And, and they would talk to us. And we would, we would people's mic it, you know? Yeah. Anyway, we, we, we finally got to our final destination, you know? And, uh, oh, <laughs> people were bringing this family gifts. Because some councilwoman said something like, well, we brought you housewarming gifts because that's what you do when somebody moves in. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite chant. My favorite chant. Let me know if you've heard this one. Okay. You want budget cuts? You want budget cuts? Well, we say you're fucking nuts. We say you're fucking nuts. Fucking hell. Choice, choice day. Oh, yeah. The weather was lousy and we were so through. So what did we do? Well, we just took over a vacant house and we brought them in. And you know what? They are still there today. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, OWS, you know, and, and the community groups and clergy and people from the community groups, they are staying with this family around the clock. Around the clock. You know, That's so the great. cops, the cops don't come in and, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, I've, I've, I've been doing a lot of these things. I've seen arrests. And I have seen police brutality. You know what? Cops weren't touching this. <laughs> they weren't touching this. Oh man, it was. <laughs> I've never, I have never seen anything like it. <laughs> oh man. You know, it's like I don't know. It's like what? What can I do? You know, I've seen so many of these things, and, but, but what can I do? Everybody does their part, but as an actress, as an actress, <coughs> how do I do my part, right? I, I mean, my union, it, it's, it's a horrible union. I belong to like three of them. They are all equally horrible. Oh, they're, they're horrible because they depend too much on the powers that be, right? Yeah, they depend, they depend on too much charity. Yeah, we're not nationalized in this country. So, you know, so the theaters, the theaters, they just depend on rich people to give them money, right? You know, the, the, the Koch brothers, well, they give money to the, to the ballet and the Met. And the Koch brothers and Bloomberg, well, they are big, big supporters of Lincoln Center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's another reason we weren't allowed in there. Mm -hmm. You see? You see, this was happening because of Satyagraha, the opera, you know? Philip Glass wrote this opera about non-violence. And it was the final performance. And Philip Glass <coughs> spoke. He did people's mic. It was, it was really quite, quite beautiful. He started out by saying, when righteousness is ignored, evilness can prevail. You know, you know how repetitive this music is. 
Mm -hmm. That's kind of gorgeous, but repetitive. <laughs> he said that like three times. <laughs> it was so full of class. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we, we waited, we waited until the opera let out. And then, then we took off our shoes and we laid them on the barricade. Because you see, in the opera, that's just what Gandhi and the Indian resistors resisting British rule did. They took off their shoes and they lined them on the stage. And it was to symbolize humility and, and groundedness and being one with the earth. You know, so we did the same thing. And, and, and people, you know, they started coming out and they were like children. Because, you see, there were all these cups. And then there was this barricade of people chanting and, and playing music. And, and then, then they saw the barricade of shoes lined up. And it was just like they had just seen in the opera. Mm -hmm. And they were, like, they were like children at Christmas time. They were, they were coming forward and slowly peeking and, you know, and, Cops were saying, go back, go back, but still the people kept coming forward, you know? And the cops, oh, well, we were going to rough them up. Oh, they're coming from the opera, right? And we're saying, we're saying, oh, join us, join us, join us. And yeah, about a hundred of them came forward and they joined us.